If you'd allow me a few ticks on the clock, just a couple of things I want to get off my chest. I want to first start with, again, saying salute to Basil Ellaby, the brother who was uh, the city tried to use as a scapegoat, who DOT, Department of Transportation, tried to use as a scapegoat with the inferno that uh, burned under I-85 and actually collapsed the bridge, caused a major traffic alteration for several weeks in the city of Atlanta. Shout out to all of those that were involved. We had a hell of a coalition. Uh, I put a post out earlier and that contained a link with an article from Atlanta Magazine. That's probably the most detailed piece I've seen with uh, how this thing got started. Uh, the details as it was ongoing. And now we have what I labeled hashtag success story. But let me make sure I'm clear because now that Brother Basil has graduated and is moving on with his life, I can now give my two cents. Notice I said success story and not victory. Why do I say that? <clears throat> because the program that Brother Basil had to complete, the conditions were once completed, then the charges would be dropped. There's an article that I'll attach to this post where it clearly states that DOT was partly responsible, partly. See, this was a success story because Brother Basil was not only homeless, Brother Basil had been suffering with addiction all of his life and now his life is on track, he is no longer homeless, and he is headed into uh, employment. He has had employment consistently, but he is headed into employment after the completion of this program. But shame on the city of Atlanta, and shame on the Department of Transportation. You see, Basil was still a scapegoat, so I gotta eat my own words. I said the scapegoat that, the scapegoat that never was, I think, is my last post. But I'm incorrect. Because of the charges being dropped, because of the completion of the program, that means nobody is held accountable. DOT in a report that was done shows that they are partly responsible, partly. Well, how come they're not sharing in part of the punishment? See, again, this is a success story. This was a village coming together, all races, a various uh, amount of organizations, a true coalition to save Brother Basil. But for those of you that were inconvenienced by that bridge, the true culprits, the Department of Transportation, the city, were never brought to justice and never will be. So salute to you, Brother Basil. This one really warmed my spirit. Those of you that know, know. Those of you that don't, I encourage you to check out that Atlanta Magazine article that's in my previous post. Moving on, um, I'm going to need you. Uh, this is a public service announcement. I'm going to need some of you guys to stop spewing, stop regurgitating the self-inflicted propaganda as it relates to this presidential race. I hear all the time that all of this bickering and fighting, it's not going to do anything but give us four more years of Trump. Well, how is that? Considering that this is a primary, let me remind some of you about your party politics. Excuse me. <clears throat> let me remind some of you about your party politics that I could give a damn about. I'm a candidate-driven type of person. My vote gets... Those who get my vote are because they serve my issues. It's just the way I work. But a primary, I don't mind the blood sport debate. I don't mind the, for the record, could there be less of the juvenile rhetoric? Absolutely. But I don't mind folks getting in the ring, a no holes barred battle to see who wants to represent the Democratic ticket. Because technically, according to your party politics, 
when a ticket is selected after the primary going into the general election, everybody is supposed to be on board. So I need you guys to quit. You're doing more harm than good by regurgitating that mess, acting as if Trump and Pence are some immovable object. Did you forget that they lost the popular vote by nearly 2,000, 3, 3 million, 2,000, by nearly 3 million votes? Did you forget that? Any pair, and I mean any pair, with the power of the people behind them in a concentrated attack on the electoral college, hashtag abolish the electoral college, but a concentrated attack on the electoral college will take the seat. He's not some immovable object. Stop it. Like your grandma used to do. Smack you on the backside of your hand and tell you to stop it. I mean, let's just be honest. As a couple, Trump and Pence at bare minimum are intellectually deficient. These aren't some superpowers here. But what if he does get four more years? You know what my contingency plan is? More members of us on school boards, more members of us in seats of municipalities all across this nation, aldermen, council representatives, mayors, more of us as Chief executive officers of states, meaning governors, more of us in Congress, hashtag flip the Senate. Remember those racist Caucasians from back in the day after the Civil War that executed masterfully their state's rights? All politics is local. If you control your local politics, that will combat most of the bullshit. So get that local shit, that local control happening, man. While we're worried about the White House, we need to be as equally worried about your house, my house, and our house. Some of that community with the emphasis, emphasis on unity. Donald Trump is playing a very dangerous game. He makes you hirelings. He makes you low-income white folks, you low-income Caucasian, he, you, 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 you red coats, you red hats. He makes you think that you are truly his base when he could truly give a fuck about you. He'd rather deal with a brother or anybody of, some, of color that's got some money before he would dare deal with you hirelings. Some of you are awakening, and that's a dangerous game he's playing. Because his true base is the Wall Street boys. His true base are your big Fortune 500 CEOs. His true base are those that he's had secrets on for years because he's been in their circle. His true base is those with a slew of money. And the more that the hirelings, those militia boys, those MAGA boys who he, who he parades around as if that's his base, the more they awaken, it's dangerous. Those are the ones that are sitting in trees and camouflage and sitting on top of buildings, so on and so forth. So if we do get four more years, what is your contingency plan? I move on to the city of South Fulton. I understand there's a special call meeting by the government of South Fulton this coming Monday, and it is to deal with the legislation that is proposed, House Bill 921, House Bill 985, House Bill 1019, provisions in the city charter. Now, the South Side delegation has had a couple of meetings or have been at a couple of meetings, and I've heard that this is coming. But you know what's sad? I understand there are areas that need tweaking. I understand that this bill, these bills basically change the power of the mayor. But you know what's sad to me is the fact that those that are those that authored and sponsored this legislation did not even come before the people and explain it before you filed it. 
Here we are talking unity and it's still backdoor deals going on that's changing the charter of a city that we now reside in. Now I want you to understand, I haven't dissect the bills as of yet. So I'm not telling you I'm pro or against either of the bills. But what I am telling you is, it don't sit well with me and I know it don't sit well with you. That there is currently legislation that is filed up under the gold dome that changes the charter of our city. And there hasn't been one city town hall discussing what was up and coming. Now, it had been said in the past. But damn, it seems disingenuous that you file without notifying all the people. Damn, it seems disingenuous that no matter if you plan to do what you plan to do, that you don't politically and strategically update the public prior to doing so. <laughs> so I'm sure there's more to come. I'm sure Monday is going to be explosive. It didn't necessarily have to be. So you guys keep putting us in these situations of confrontation and combativeness. I guess sooner or later we'll get on the same page. There's a big announcement coming. Can't give you all the details right now. Uh, I can say this, that the Save Ourselves Legal Clinic will be on June 20th at 9 a.m. There will be another function that it will actually launch. I will be able to tell you that very, very soon. But just mark June 20th down, a celebration of June 10th, which is June 19th. Uh, those of you that know SOS Clinic, appreciate all of you uh, 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 legal experts that have signed up. Those of you that have kept this thing going with SOS over the years, we appreciate you. Uh, any of you that have legal issues that will still be uh, front and center as of June 20th, bring all your legal documents, have every question ready to go because you can get your stuff knocked out within that 15 minutes or so of a free legal consultation. Some of you don't even know you're going to need it because it's just now uh, 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 February 28th. And by June 20th, you're probably going to need these services. There'll be more to come on that, man. Um, this message was delivered in the spirit of righteousness and unity. Until next time, each one, reach one, teach, peace.